the easiest way to explain Game of Thrones is basically it's the story of King's Landing and what family is going to have control of. Is it going to be the Tyrells, the Lannisters? It's not going to be the Tyrells at this point. No, nah, there's <laughs> it's just the grandma left. Yeah. Uh, basically, the main, the protagonist family are the Starks, who live in Winterfell, who s- suffer a series of misfortunes. I think is the basic is the basic way to describe that. There's the Lannisters, which are the they're current, the antagonists. Uh, they have control of King's Landing, which includes all of the major armies of the South. There's Daenerys Targaryen, also known as Daenerys Stormborn, who's trying to come and take her rightful place back in King's Landing because her ancestors used to be the king and queen. Um, there's a whole. It was big... her father who was the king before. Yeah, the Mad King. <laughs> yes. I mean, Game of Thrones is basically about, like, as Daenerys Targaryen put it in the series. Lannister, Baratheon, Stark, Tyrell, they're all just spokes on a wheel. This one's on top, then that one's on top, and on and on it spins, crushing those on the ground. I'm not going to stop the wheel. I'm going to break the wheel. Right, so the target audience is basically our age group, as well as people who have read the books and enjoy medieval fantasy, as well as various other thing, other things in the series which we won't quite mention. Adult content. <laughs> yes, let's, let's put it that way. Um, the commercial and artistic promise of the premise. Do you think it... How well, how well do you think it, the show serves the artistic and commercial promise? I'd say it serves it pretty well. Um, Game of Thrones average cost per episode has gone from about six million dollars for season one up to a maximum of ten million dollars for the um, episode in season six, Battle of the Bastards, which is one of their biggest battle scenes that they've had in the franchise history, which is a pretty big feat for them. Um, they're always going to exotic locations, they have a lot of computer-generated characters and um, computer-generated set extensions to be able to, again, try to increase the fantasy elements and serve the books the best they can. Although they do have to change the storylines occasionally in order to fit more of the main characters rather than side characters, where for instance, the entire plot with Sansa Stark and Ramsay Bolton, that was in fact another character, but it got changed because the character whose storyline it is in the books doesn't actually exist in the TV show. And there was a big blow up issue online in the fan communities of what Ramsay Bolton did to Sansa Stark because that didn't happen in the books, of how that changed her character in the film or in the TV franchise. Though it could be an artistic change for the TV show in order to make Sansa stronger as a character, which is reflected then in the last episode. It is season six, right? Yes. Of season six, when she gets her revenge on Ramsay Bolton for what he did. Your words will disappear. Your house will disappear. Your name will disappear. All memory of you will disappear. There, there's a character for everybody to like, there's a character for everybody yeah. to hate, there's a character that everybody wants dead. There's also, there's quite an age range of characters as well, really, yeah. isn't there? So you have, you have somebody for younger people to root for, you have somebody for slightly older audiences to root for. Whether or not they actually end up rooting for them is entirely up to them, because everyone has their own opinion. To be honest, you don't even have to be a certain age to root for certain characters. I mean, I love Elena Tyrell, but that might just be because I love Diana Rigg. So, also, having an ensemble cast helps there, I think because you you see somebody that you know from something else and you'll be more drawn to them because 
because you know who they are. Like, for instance, Ned Stark was played, of course, by Sean Bean up until he had his head cut off. It was kind of a dramatic ending. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but but everybody but everybody knows who Sean Bean is. So that that helps in that regard. Mm-hmm. Just in the Emmy Awards for American television, it's been nominated for well over a hundred awards and has won about thirty percent of them, which equates to about thirty-five as of the Business Insider article that was talking about the top 10 most awarded TV series of all time. Um, Game of Thrones was awarded at that time of the article a total of 35 Emmy Awards, third only to Frasier at number two with about 37, and Saturday Night Live with about 44. And we think it will probably overtake these, these awards in the near future because at the rate the show is going, it will only garner more awards as the time goes on whilst Frasier has, of course, ended, and SNL being in the... The writing's a little sad. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. But if it, it wasn't for Donald Trump, they wouldn't have anybody watch him. Mm. <laughs> we're not talking about that. No, we're not. Um... But Game of Thrones still has two more seasons to go. HBO has put their heart and soul and a big portion of their wallet into it. And as as long as the book is keep the next book, Windsor Winter, is being teased to come out, it will only increase the hype yes. for watching that, the next that's season. That's exactly what I was going to say. I'm sorry, I forgot the words. And it's estimated that Game of Thrones budget um, Game of Thrones, the way that their budget works with HBO is they're given a total amount for the entire season, which will be about uh, $100 million. And since season seven will only be shooting a total of seven episodes, that means that they have a higher number or a higher budget per episode to be able to work with. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. It will be, especially seeing as they film in Northern Ireland and they film in Iceland as well, which will be cheaper places to actually film. So they'll be able to do more with that budget than perhaps they would if they were filming a bit closer to where the, where the series came from. Mm -hmm. If we think, what we think about the show and if we think it works. Well, I've never actually seen the show in its entirety. I've only read the books. So, from what I know about it, from what I know about it, it mostly follows the story. Sorry. <laughs> it mostly follows the story, but there are some parts which I feel audiences are upset about in that it doesn't follow it true to its word. Overall, though, I'd say what the producers and the show creators of the TV series have done have brought the... Um, <coughs> excuse me. It, it does work in what, it, in what it's trying to achieve, mm -hmm. but in some parts it goes overboard. Yeah, way too overboard. Um, but for the most part, they've tried to keep a lot of it true to the original source material in the books from George R. R. Martin. Um, they're constantly consulting him to try to be able to make sure that the character dynamics are relatively accurate and that they're following at least somewhat close to the story that he originally intended. Yeah, because I think at least some of the storylines, they merge them simply because they budget don't... Budget constraints. Yeah, budget constraints. It's a huge ensemble cast, so you can't have so many people, but... You can't remember yeah. everybody's names, let no. alone when they added more. No, <laughs> that, that would alienate an audience, I think, as well as the fact that the show is, the show is an hour long, isn't it? Um, average episode length is between about 45 to 55 minutes. Okay. Sorry, it's an hour at home, so it's like... That's an hour. Yeah. And, um, an audience wouldn't be able to sit and watch it for so long if it was anything more than that. And especially per episode, there's an hour an episode, ten episodes a season. It's a lot if you're trying to binge watch. Yeah. It's, it's doable, but it's a lot. Yes. But I think that they were smart for doing it as a TV series instead of a series of films. Um, Harry Potter had actually benefited of being a TV series because it would have given them more room to be able to have a strong character development. Yeah. But all said and done, I think they've definitely achieved their goal. Yes. They've made money. 
they they made money. <laughs> that was their intention. They made money. That Come was on. their intention. They've done they've done their job. They've done they've done all they can do in that regard. Okay, this has been Bradley Steinbach and Hannah Deakin, um, FEA three seventy five, business of producing of TV. Father, I wish to confess. I wish to confess. You wish to confess? I saved you. I saved this city and all your worthless lives. I should have let Stannis kill you all. Tyrion! Do you wish to confess? Yes. Father, I'm guilty. Guilty? Is that what you want to hear? You admit you poisoned the king? No. Of that I'm innocent. I'm guilty of a far more monstrous crime. I'm guilty of being a dwarf. You are not on trial for being a dwarf. Oh, yes I am. I've been on trial for that my entire life. Have you nothing to say in your defense? Nothing but this. I did not do it. I did not kill Joffrey, but I wish that I had. Watching your vicious bastard die gave me more relief than a thousand lying whores. I wish I was the monster you think I am. I wish I had enough poison for the whole pack of you. I would gladly give my life to watch you all swallow it. Samarin! Samarin! Escort the prisoner back to his cell. I will not give my life for Joffrey's murder, and I know I'll get no justice here, so I will let the gods decide my fate. I demand a trial by combat.